The video you're about to watch contains information related to medical treatments. This video is for informational purposes only and should not be used as a substitute for medical advice. Please consult your doctor for more information. Welcome to CP Diaries, a regular series where we delve into topics that matter to adults in the cerebral palsy community. When people think of Botox, they usually think of this. Heaps of you have been asking me whether or not I have anti-wrinkle injections, and I do, because I love them. I only have it though. Botox acts to reduce muscle spasticity and dystonia and pain. And while people associate Botox with eliminating movement like it does for cosmetic purposes, the reduction of spasticity actually improves movement for people with cerebral palsy. And many people actually report having increased energy because they're not dealing with the same intensities of symptoms day after day after day. Everyone's experience with this treatment is different, so I'll be telling you a bit about my own experience and later I'll be joined by my friend Nick, who also has CP and will compare notes. When I decided to get Botox, I really wasn't sure how I was gonna approach it and I think this is something adults struggle with. They're often not advertising adult services. Lockdown did not help with the symptoms. Last year, I wrote a piece on how being in quarantine 23 hours a day impacted me physically. Initially, when I began searching for my specialist, all my search results catered to kids, and this was really frustrating. I spent large chunks of time refining my search more and more. Even when I specified adults, it still came back with results for children. However, eventually I found a great doctor to do my treatments. St. Vincent's were lovely. All of the nurses were lovely, the check-in people, the anesthesiologists, the three surgeons who obviously were doing the injecting and all of that. They were really nice guys. It's just when they started wrapping me up in plaster, I was like, guys, don't bother, but they did, so, you know. It's, it's just so radically different to my experience because my experience was get a referral from the GP, went on a waiting list for a consult about three months after that, met with the doctor, he did an assessment, he said, we'll book you in for this date. I came in on that date. Uh, I thought, are you gonna give me anesthesia? He's like, oh, no, 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 we don't wanna do that because we want you up and moving as fast as possible. And then he just laid me down and did the injections and did a follow-up consult in six weeks. It was just so different. And honestly, I was, surprised by how quick the bounce back was like a nothing bounce back it didn't affect my work at all in a negative way yeah and I think when you come I'll be curious to see how you go the second time around because the first, I've had it twice and the first time I got it I had nothing to compare it to because my body as it is was all I've ever known and just, well, that's it. yeah and just recognizing how much spasticity and dystonia you have which is what my do doctor explained to me it treats um and not having for me it's in my legs and it's that constant clenching up in the calf muscles it's like it's just like ah uh. so when i got it the second time around the weeks leading up to it it's like i can't wait to get it done because you realize that first time how much of a difference yeah and around with it for 30 years or however long yeah, and I guess I'm only four out of, four hours out of having it done, and well, I've already been a bit belligerent by ripping this thing off. But you know, <laughs> this looks like the you, you could bury this in a sarcophagus. It looks like a mummy. <laughs> you have to keep it as a memento, then. Uh, I, I can show you just just in my forearm down here. Yeah. Elbow, and then through here and, and down. I've got a line there, I think, of texture still, so all down that area there. Absolutely, yeah, it feels a lot more relaxed, which is good. And I can feel that my my wrist can stretch like that, that way more. So whereas before I was like this and it was hard to get to that position, now yeah. it's, it's, it's not perfect, but I can do that a lot more. So, yeah, I can kind of just Thanks. move it. Um, the doctor said recovery would probably be a few days, if that, like maybe a day or two. And that's why I got rid of the cask when I came home, because I feel fine and my wrist feels good already. So there's no need to lock it in one position, you know, for, for the next week, because I'm, I'm seeing the surgeon again next Monday morning. It's funny, when I got it done in my legs, because I got it done across the calves and in the Achilles heel, 
I, I uh, he pretty much had me up and moving right away. He encouraged me to do lots of walking, lots of stretching, lots of exercise to get it moving through my bloodstream, or at least that's what I was told. The aim of that outcome is that I can grab barbells and dumbbells at the, at the gym more easily and, and the rowing equipment and things. And if I can grab that and lift it more easy because I've got more stronger grip now, because I've got more flexibility, then that's what I am um, aiming for. I'm not aiming to be splinted up for, for weeks on end or use splints on a regular basis because up until last year, I've got a history of using splints and none of them have worked in my whole 40 odd years of life, none of them. They always break. They always don't achieve the outcome that they're designed to. And so. Yeah, and I think that's kind of, it's all about giving you more independence and better quality of life. Like I decided to get Botox at 32 because I thought um, everything was a bit stiffer and a bit more rigid, especially during lockdown. And I wanted to sort of look after my body as it was getting older. That was the other thing. So you have just got your first Botox. Why do you think you waited that long? Uh, I, I waited because it wasn't an option for me while I was young and full of testosterone. You're young, your body works reasonably well and you're busy doing work and playing sport and doing anything else I was doing. And I was just like, nah, I'll, I'll worry about that when I'm older. And as I've aged a little bit in my late 30s, it started to become a problem at work. And then I was like, well... Botox seemed the less invasive and that's the first step I wanted to take just so I'd have more movement or regain some of that movement I had five or six years ago and then I could just do my job. What advice do you have for people with CP, like adults with CP who are sort of considering maybe getting Botox, if any? Well, I think they should get it done because as we've said, everyone's different and with life, you just got to keep trying new things, whether you like it or you're unsure about it and see how it goes. And what for, if you can get some relief out of it, we'll do it. And I'm hoping in the next day or two, things ease up and I feel really great. But I think anyone should try it once or, or, or maybe twice and give it a go because you never know. And it's not going to, if if I just go back to my regular functionality, well, I've been dealing with that for years now, so I guess I'm okay with it. If it comes super good and I can maintain that over the long term, then I'm super happy to have it. I think so, you'll be a convert. I think you'll be like, oh, I don't know how I did without this. Yeah, I think anyone should just give it a go and see how they go. And stretching, which was a great alternative to surgery. And I saw pretty much immediate results. It was So there were some definite benefits to the Botox. What I generally found was that it was a really quick recovery time. There was an easy post-treatment of lots of walk. Actually really cheap to get Botox. I think there's an assumption that because people spend hundreds of dollars getting it for cosmetic reasons, that that same rule applies when you're getting it done for medical reasons. And this actually isn't the case because it will be covered under the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. So it's quite cost effective. If you're doing it for medical reasons, then it shouldn't cost you heaps of money. I really enjoyed doing it. I've done it about twice and I'll be going for a follow-up treatment in a month or so. It's been really good. So if you want to share your experience or share your story, please send us a direct message. We'd love to hear your story.